So this is a film about issues that may arise when 21st century science is implemented in a school. Overall, we've had very positive feedback about the new courses, but obviously from school to school there are different areas of implementation that have caused concern, and some of these will be discussed in this film. In terms of implementing 21st century science, I think you can break it down to several stages. And before we actually did anything about 21st century science, I think I spent a lot of time with my department looking at the changes in the curriculum and why the changes in the curriculum had to happen. And although if people are stuck for time, they might feel that they just get straight in and look at schemes of work. And I would really advise doing this because it is a dramatic change for the department and there are lots of stresses associated with it. And I think the first and most important point is to get people on board for those changes. People say, yeah, I can see why we need to do this and really believe it themselves, then they're going to take it on board more. The courses available varies from school to school. The vast majority of schools are all offering GCSE science and additional science, and many are offering additional applied science as well. Uh, this uptake for this course is growing. Entry level is also offered in some schools for students who are working towards GCSE, and an interesting model is developing where students might take entry level and additional applied science and that's appropriate for some students and within uh, the whole body of 21st century science schools some are offering separate science routes and we'd expect this to uh, continue to increase. Well the 21st century science suite was designed to be taught by a parallel curriculum model so students would follow science and additional science or science and applied throughout year 10 and 11. Uh, during the pilot some schools developed an alternating model so students would take a unit of science and then some students would follow an additional unit and some an applied unit before coming back together and studying some more GCSE science. The advantage of the parallel and alternating models is that it provides variety for students in the approach to science that they'd have throughout year 10 and year 11. Uh, it also means that students are taking their final assessments in both these courses at the end of year 11, when they are more mature and have had time to reflect on their understanding of ideas about science and some of the more complex science explanations. So we taught the modules for triple science from um, 1 straight through to 7. The reason we did that was at the same time we introduced core science as well. And so um, just to make it easy for us to actually deliver the course for the teachers, we felt we wanted to start with Unit 1 and move through to just move forward through that. However, looking back at that, we feel that we probably need to change the way we do that because maybe t doing a parallel course because we found that as we've been teaching teaching that when the triple students initially were taught units one to three um, we found that what they actually wanted initially was a bit more of a core science so they wanted units four five and six initially they wanted to actually learn some concrete science um, so looking back um, we, so we're looking at the moment to introduce something where we teach possibly unit one first and then four and then two and then five. What was natural was that teachers would come back saying can we teach it a different way so in terms of in terms of chemistry some of the chemistry teachers are coming to me and saying wouldn't it be good to teach C4 which is um, the additional science first then when we go into C1 we can add so much more to C1 because kids would have had that background and so I'm really pleased that that's beginning to happen that it's not me saying right we've done it this way let's all change it but the changes are quite organic and coming about because teachers are beginning to evaluate for themselves what's the best way to deliver it. Uh, one of the more notable points about the C21 suite is that each of the courses was very much designed for purpose so there are significant differences in the approach to science taken for example in GCSE science and additional science and applied science. Uh, these courses were all designed for students who have different needs and aspirations with regard to science. In schools there is a variety of approach to uh, guiding students to the most appropriate course. Uh, in some schools students are given open choice over the additional route that they follow. In other schools teachers use guided choice so they suggest to students the most appropriate uh, route and discuss that with them and their parents at options evening. And in the third category of schools, students are allocated to sets and the, whichever set they're in, they do a particular course. In all cases, regardless of the approach that schools use, heads of science are now, I think, finding it important to have more of an input into options evening than they might have done with the dual award, double award courses. So, for example, many heads of science now make a presentation to all parents at options evening. 
in parents' evening, year nine evening, I actually asked if I could give a talk, which so that parents would go to all their option blocks and then they'd stop and they'd come to science and then they'd hear me talk about it and hear me again talk about the need for change, why it's changing, try to kind of like allay their fears about some things that are happening in the media, try to say I'm a head of science and I think this is actually a better experience for students because of X, Y and Z. It's very important that departments have time to develop a shared understanding of how they want to present ideas about science to students. Uh, this is particularly important if departments use a rotating curriculum because students may be introduced to an idea about science in one subject area and then develop it further in a second subject area. So there needs to be not only a shared understanding but also opportunity for teachers to discuss students' progress in ideas about science. One thing I'm going to try and do is every departmental meeting to put some time aside for sharing and um, making sure that we are talking. We're fairly good at talking anyway, um, but a little bit of a formal time and people making notes would be quite useful.